Spoiler alert, everyone, for uh, 86 episodes 1 through 11, a.k.a. season 1 or first core, depending on who you ask. Careful, we're not doing 12. <laughs> yeah. Did we not? I'm pretty sure I watched 12. No, you might have watched no. 12, but only episodes 1 through 11 or season 1. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We did watch t- Rel- So we, Rel- wa- we watched the recap. We watched the recap. That's what we watched. Yes, but you and I also watched 12. No, we didn't. Yeah, we, no, we, we did. watched 11. No, because if 11 ends with uh, Reyna finding the... Le- Lena finding yeah. the, uh, the photo, right? Yes. No. Then... Wait, what? Yes, episode yeah. 11. No, I said no. Oh, okay, I thought you said no. If that if that's where it ends, then that does that take place during the same episode as like them finding the boiler? Yeah, yeah. And visiting the Gia Empire? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so eleven then. Right. Lena really takes a back seat in the last few episodes. I was so gonna she only say, gets like that one scene in the last few episodes. Wait, Gia okay. Empire? Jihad. Oh the Jihad Empire. Now, that's, that's that right the... there, no. Well no, they, well, they go no, to the old Jihad Empire. Yeah. Oh, I know yeah, what you're yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah they okay. find the city. Okay. okay, so yeah, okay, okay. So spoilers for episodes one through eleven. We'll try not to spoil episode 12, but... Look, if I don't know what it is, they're spoiling episode 12. Yeah. Because I didn't watch episode 12, because I'm waiting. I think between a light novel reader and just how quickly the context of everything changes in episode 12, we might accidentally spoil it, so I apologize in advance if we do. I'll try to keep them from doing that, because I don't want it spoiled for me either. Yeah. Because I actually really like this show. But with that being said, I think... I want to talk about characters first, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Because I think themes and themes especially, and like little extra bits that we notice that have to do with the themes and emotions is going to be a really, really long yeah. part of this. Oh, I'm <laughs> probably going to talk ad nauseum about that. So I want to talk about characters first. So we meet essentially kind of a core cast of characters, right? Yeah. And we've got M- Vladelena... Yes. Right, who's the the squadron leader in the capital city. Uh, her uncle and the scientist who's her friend are yeah. three characters that we talk about in the main city. Yep. And then in the 86, we have the squad. Yeah. Of who, there are diminishing returns for how much we get characterization of them, because we get a lot of characterization on the five that are still alive in episode 11. I mean, early on in the series, they oh, do yeah. make it a very big point to get you to, like, see these characters having a happy, fun time before they start killing them. Yeah, but a lot of it feels now like kind of nostalgic memories. Don't you remember all those dead people? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Especially with, like, uh, Fido's uh, cam. Oh, Oh, God, God, that scene hurt. The Fido cam was heart-rending. Like, uh, is this this some sort of recap? Yeah, and then... And then it ends with Fido's fucking death. Yeah, Yeah. and then we have... And then we have the... Mechanic, right? Yep. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we've got the Undertaker's brother yep. as a big character. And then outside of that, it's just wrong. the, uh, as I affectionately call them. Uh, the Suicide what, what, Squad? No, no. I was going to say, uh, oh yeah, Mecha Pteranodons. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it is actually like that a lot. Uh, yeah. The Legion. Yeah, yeah. the Legion. So, so those that's essentially the cast we're working with. We've got the 86ers, we've got the mechanic, and we've got the three in the capital city, and then the legion. That's yeah. what we're working with. Nick, Nick's just trying to get out. So, speaking in terms of characters we have in the capital, we have Vladelena Millie's, her, yeah, her yeah. uncle, and the scientist, yep. Yep. who is her friend and her age. Yep. So, honestly, I like Vladelina. Um, I think she represents a lot of what I would consider situational naivete. I think Lena is definitely thematically the most important character to these first 11 episodes as far as what the messaging is trying to convey. Yeah. Because she's the one who we see discovering all this from the viewpoint that we have of not knowing the background. Like, she is learning episode by episode of all these horrors and atrocities and things like that. And so we are learning with her, while, whereas the 86ers already know all this stuff. Yeah, so yeah. all of the... Because like, I don't think the 86ers... Because the 86ers, they know they're going to die. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they're they living their life to the best of their extent at this point. But they for are the... And they're comfortable hating the people at the Capitol. But for the majority of this show, up until I'd say episode like eight or nine, Vladelena is still convinced that there is a way to save them. Mm-hmm. She does not know that the 86 Spearhead Squadron is a death squad. 
Yeah, and yeah. all of what Lena, is, like all of Lena's arc, like Lena's the one that has the arc of this. Yeah, series. she's supposed. I guess you could say she's the stand-in for what the allegory is supposed to be here, because it's supposed to be calling out the ways that in which your general life can fuck over people that you don't even see. Yeah, yep. and I want to be very brutally honest here. There are incredibly strong Nazi overtones in this oh, whole show. Oh, yeah. Th- this is just. The Nazi internment camps and like Auschwitz. It's like if yeah. Nazis had a zombie apocalypse. In yeah, the of it. Th- that's all yeah. this is. So I want to be very clear that we will be mentioning that this is similar to certain things, and that's why we're going to bring up things like racism and stuff because this is what Lena's dealing with. So Lena is coming from the kind of I say the pol- British coded capital city. It's yeah. essentially Western European coded in terms of like aesthetics. Mm-hmm. And these are the people who believe that 86ers, as the main title titular characters are called, 86ers yeah. are not human. To be very specific, in a textbook entry, if you pause one of the frames in the show, it actually refers to them in a textbook with a body diagram as humanoid pigs. Yeah, yeah. they bring that up a couple yeah. times. Yeah. Um, I just said um. Ha ha ha. Lena is very much so a fuck, 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 fuck. Fuckity fuck. She's not even a She's stand... a princess. No, that's not. Lena is the stand in for the allegory. Like, we. Yeah. Lena is the character mm-hmm. who, at the beginning, she works with the 86. And she doesn't see them as non human. No, there's actually but, a yeah. point right at the very beginning where she gives that. Like, she lectures a uh, college lecture. Like, she steals a college lecture in the middle. She's like, I know this. I, and the 86ers call her out. Like, you can say how wrong the cell is all you want but you're not actually helping and you're still part of the system that's fucking us over exactly but as you go through the episodes lena kind of learns and realizes that while she while she believes that this system is wrong right she does not know the scope of this system at all she has some sense of that they're human and she considers them to be human and it's true that it's it's talked about in some of the episodes that there are good people in the the public in the republic yeah. yeah it's like some of the 86ers were raised by people who are sympathetic to 86ers yeah. so this is not just lena who considers them human mm-hmm. but yeah. lena's the one who we're seeing realize that this is a death squad these people are being systematically killed off people are not supposed to live past their term yeah. limits that the the system will not give them supplies it will not adequately help them and it's all overarched by this massive fallacy in the thinking of the entire republic that they're clinging on to so desperately that the legion is going to die out in two years there's this idea that they've convinced themselves of and i was watching the first episode with realm and realm had already seen the show so he knew what was happening and i was sitting there and they were talking in the college lecture and they were saying the college professor was saying that the legions only have a specific lifespan and within two years they will all have died out and we will be able to continue without war there will no longer be war in the republic and this is why the military is outdated and so they're talking about how military personnel are not going to have a good reference for job prospects because they their job doesn't matter anymore in two years and i said to realm as they were explaining this i said that feels like a huge leap of logic Mm-hmm. Like, that does yeah. not feel like that is the reality of an actual combat. The fact that they are all so convinced that in two years none of this is going to matter, that's bullshit. That's never the case. That's... Here's the thing. The old units of the Legion they actually captured and, like, they take a little peek into did actually work that way. Yep, yeah, no, but I, I'm, I'm not saying that they didn't. The point I'm making is that they're not moving forward. Yeah. Like, the people in the Republic are so stuck on this single idea and holding on to that because it makes them look better. Yeah, they're throwing away, like, trying to survive. That's, like, their mentality. They're and they don't... Away. But they don't care. The 86 could tell them that's not the case, but they're not going to yeah. ask. They're not going to listen to them. And so, through Lena, we're seeing essentially someone who has blinders on, right? Yep. She has blinders on, and they're being taken off over the course of 11 episodes. The rest of the Republic's... Their blinders are never being taken off. Nobody else but Lena and, and the scientist is realizing what's happening. Well, and, arguably, uh, the well, hold on. and even if the blinders are being taken off, like of some of the Republic citizens, they they don't do anything about it because they yeah. can't because it's so systematically entrenched into the culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
the or in in theory the scientist based off her arc in the show actually already has her blinders off but she's so overwhelmed by like she is making the conscious choice yeah. to put her fucking binders back on no they're off but she's just so cynical about it she doesn't care anymore yeah yeah Whereas Lena is getting the blinders taken off and is horrified by what she's seeing. The, the scientist has her blinders taken off, but she is making the conscious choice to not look at any of what's being exposed yeah, yeah. by the missing blinders. That's it. That, and I think that's a really interesting that we see a, three characters in the Capitol. One who believes the lies. One who is learning that the lies are lies, as yep. I've said. And one who refuses to acknowledge what's happening. And has such an innate sense of guilt that she doesn't really feel like she should Wait. tell people that we're all going to die in a couple of years Wait. about all these atrocities. Who's the first one? The uncle. He the firmly uncle believes actually, all this. No, the he uncle knows. actually, he's, for, he's trying to keep the blinders on the people. Yeah. He yeah. knows. He, his blinders are off. He's actively trying to keep everyone else's yeah. blinders on. Yeah. yeah. He's but, accepted them. Yes, but, he, but that's in terms of the 86. He still yeah. doesn't acknowledge that the war isn't going to be over in two years. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Legion being essentially not, yeah, not a, yeah. uh, not, not timed. Yeah. Their existence is not on a timer anymore. Like I said, Lena is a great character yeah. overall for eleven episodes. She only has one moment that I do not like in eleven episodes, and they don't really pursue it, and nothing really leads up to it. So it's just like a minute of content that I didn't enjoy. Uh, which one? Ah, uh, the scene where she's talking and her chocolate has a heart on it, and she goes all blushy and red. Um, and yes, yeah. I realize the light novel has more on the budding romance, but the show does not, and therefore it's irrelevant and yeah. actually kind of a shitty moment in the show. But it only lasts for like 60 seconds, so it doesn't really matter. Actually, I want to talk about the uh, discrimination and like uh, Lane actually noticing. In the novel, uh, what they actually pointed out is you don't see any 86 yeah. in like the... Uh, she's in Sector 1, the most yeah. high-class sector, because there were actually 86... Yeah, in the, like, yeah, yeah, they make that very clear yeah. in the show. That's not the light novel. We see that in the show too. That's yeah. that's the whole yeah. thing with the Undertaker and the scientist. Yeah, Here's like that's made thing. very clear. She didn't even realize it until they pointed out. You don't see any eighty six in Sector One at all, which is like at that point she realized, oh god damn, they're just killing them all. I mean, I don't think that's necessarily the immediate con leap to conclusion. I mean, this reminds me more of like. Uh, this reminds me more of a society that's so stratified that you don't realize there's no African Americans in the city you're living in until someone points it out. Because yeah. logically, you know that they're there, but you just don't acknowledge that they're there or not. It's like uh, the districts in Hunger Games. Yep. You just don't see people of certain classes in District 1, but you don't necessarily think about it if you're living there every day. Yeah, but like they didn't point it out in like the anime, and I kind of just want they to do did that. really point it out in the anime. They, well, they like, talked about like how straight out like saying it though. They did kind they? of did, yeah. The whole thing with the scientists, they pointed out that like and, every and... eighty-six member in the capital city was removed. Oh no, I'm not talking about that scene. I'm talking about when uh, Shin and the team were talking to her about discrimination and their pride. Yeah, but they talk about that a lot. Yeah. They, 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 that is a constant reoccurring topic. It, they cover it. It, it. it is something that's covered, maybe not to the same degree, but it's still definitely a, to yeah. a point, a talking point. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. my problem with it. It's not to that degree, and I kind of liked it to that degree. But also, it's still pretty good. Yeah. Also, if we want to talk about light novel, let's save it for free thoughts. Okay. Specific, because that might get into spoiler territory if you don't know where to stop. And I'm trying my best. Yeah, but, but I don't free, trust these thoughts. two. But free thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. But free thoughts. Yeah, free thoughts. Because right now we are talking about the anime. Yeah. People are not, a lot of people won't have read both, or okay. done both. Uh, all right, so, so we've talked, so I think we've talked enough about the uh, the capital characters. So we're talking about the wanted. 86ers now. Yeah. yeah. So with the 86ers, we've got a squad. Yeah. The, the spearhead squad. And what we learn later in the show is that the spearhead squad is basically the end of the line for any 86ers that have been this is maybe the worst way to put it but successful enough to survive most of their term of mandatory service yep so anyone who's go who's going on four years or five because i think they serve what six years yeah they no, serve five five years so anyone five who's year four term. or close to five years yep. gets sent to well, spearhead uh Four or in their fifth term because they get sent in about six months there. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. Anyone in their fourth or fifth year. So, and this is where they're essentially sent to die. 
they're yeah. supposed to die either fighting them or on an expedition at the end of their term. Yeah. Once there are so few of them that they can just send them for an expedition. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is brutal. Yeah. And we yeah. get a lot... The show itself really emphasizes the brutality of it. I mean, one of the parts of the opening, we didn't talk about it specifically when we were talking about uh, the last segment, because we shouldn't have, and that was good, but the last scene of the opening in every episode, right before they show a very particular flower that I'll talk about, is an image of all of the dead members of the squad. You see their backs. They're standing in a field looking at a sunset, and you're looking at the backs, and every every time someone dies, they're added to the opening. Yeah. So you start the show with maybe only one or two people showing up in it, but by the end of the show, there's like 20-something people in this shot. And right after this shot fades, we are taken to an image of a single red spider lily that withers and dies. And the red spider lily symbolizes a final goodbye in yeah. the language of flowers yep. and in Japanese mythology. It is a final goodbye. Is and it also I remember you as well? Nope, just final goodbye. Okay. Yeah. This is the last time you will meet these people in this life. So, I mean, that's a really kind of... Like they're driving the point home of these characters are they're they're not living they're not living yeah. the good life they're really not yeah there's a graffiti on one of the walls of the base they're in that says welcome to spearhead the squad closest to heaven yeah yep as Nick Nack said to me off podcast uh, makes it hurt in my meow meow to see it <laughs> <laughs> I, I know Nick Nack was really I think he he had the most emotions regarding this show I know I. I'm kind of hypocritical in that I understand the emotions of this show, and I get that there's, like, sad parts and happy parts and depressing parts, but I didn't actually, like, cry or, or like, emotionally react all that much. Yeah. Maybe because I was binging, uh, maybe because I was discussing the show with Realm as I watched, but, so in this respect, I am not the emotional go-to here. Normally yeah. I'll be like, I cried. I did not, unfortunately, but I think Nick Knack did. Yeah. Um... And I think there were some very specific moments if you wanted to, like, touch on, maybe... I think the final moment where Lena's finally able to humanize all of these people she's been hearing about their issues from basically across the country. She's finally able to put a face to them, finally able to humanize them, and you just see the, like, the full emotional weight. Fin- like, she, she's obviously connected in this entire series, but it finally hits her uh, in that last moment where everything sort of becomes especially real. Because yeah. she, she's drawn little characters of them on this organization board she mm-hmm. has, and she kind of takes their faces off and puts them in a glass box when they die, but she comes to the base after they've left at the end of the show, and there's a picture that they left for her of all of them, and then someone has drawn on a separate piece a, a recreation of the image with all of their names so she can finally see what they actually looked like. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, she's been talking with these people every day for however long this show covers. It, it, there are actual dates at the bottom of the show, by the way, so you could actually uh, figure out, like, how many months it is. I'm I'm not sure. I didn't I keep think track. Three? I yeah, don't it's remember. Like, it's like two, three months. It's probably. just this heart, heart-wrenching heart moment where she can finally put a face to them after they've already become, in her eyes, a victim to the system. And they yeah. they all leave notes, and I think the, the note that actually got me a little bit was Undertaker. Shin's note left for her is, if you make it here... Leave flowers for us. Uh, if you make it to our, to our final, final destination, to, yeah. please leave flowers. Please leave us. flowers for us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that hurt me. Yeah. That hurt me deep inside on an oh. emotional level. Because she's standing... So in the previous episode, when they leave, they kind of set off into the sunset down a railroad track... And it's got this really beautiful music playing in, and it kind of feels like hopeful in a way because they're playing it off as potentially something that is a little bit hopeful, but also poignant and depressing. And this last scene when she's reading Shin's note about the flowers, she's standing on the same railroad yeah. track looking down it just at the straight direction. Up hard cuts to that railroad yeah. track. Yeah. yeah, and she's standing on it looking down at the way they went. And then she says something like, I'm going to keep going for them. Yeah. And then walks in the other direction. Mm-hmm. Whew. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. That hurt me. Yeah. 
that entire ending had like the feel of watching a sad Civil War movie, in my opinion. Like, oh, fuck. Well, it, it is it. It's not Saving Private Ryan. That it I'm might be. It. it might be. That's the depressing might. one. Yeah, but it, it it's it's along that kind of line almost in its own right. I do want to go back a bit more. Um, the, God dang it, I did that. I do want to go back a bit more. The mural that is on the Spearhead Squadron's wall, you actually see it as the statue of the Capitol. Yeah. And that is actually the saint who actually helped found the Capitol. And there's a lot of backstory there. Right, read the light novel you want to know a bit more about there. But you can actually see in the mural that she is, I think, pointing down or pointing her sword so- down at them. Yeah, so fun fact, um, I was watching this with Realm, and so I'm, uh, I'm of Eastern European descent, and I've actually been to several monuments in Eastern Europe, and one of them is, um, it's, it's in Russia, and it's the Motherland Calls or something like that, and it's a very similar statue of a woman gesturing to a population kind of behind her with her sword stretched in front of her. Is, is the statue, and it was incredibly reminiscent of that for me. And that actually hit me maybe the hardest out of any scene in this anime was seeing the statue, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, the and I mean the, and the Republic's flag is, like, a mix of, like, the American, Russian, and German flags. Well, re- really, yeah. the, the Russian and German, because it's, it's the same colors as the American, but you could say that of about 15 European flags. Yeah. But it's got the same striping convention as the Russian flag and the former German flag, and yeah. the current German flag. Because, yeah. like, uh, it's actually based off the, like, principles of, like, the old flags of... Uh, what was it? Loyalty, brotherhood, nobility. Yeah, or like the three sections of the yeah. population. You had one color for each, like the plebeians, the aristocrats, the whatevers. Yeah. And I think one of the things I want to mention now that I kind of brought up the fact that there was a lot of, I, there was a lot of Eastern European and Western European influence was that's one of the things is that's different between the eighty sixers and the capital, right? Yeah. That really shows the difference in their treatment and how they're viewed is the way that their surrounding buildings look. So in the capital, it's really beautiful. It's It basically looks like you're in London or Paris, you know, going down a main street, this beautiful Western European architecture, kind of old and historic. And it's all pristine, stark white. All of it. Mixed with a bit of uh, more modern day technology, if not yeah. more advanced than but, our own. But the coloring is like white on the buildings and stuff like that. With yeah. There are accent colors, but it's primarily white. But you go out to the realm of the 86 and everything... So I watch a lot of Urbex videos, I'm going to preface this. Especially European Urbexers. The 86 compounds and the stuff they see looks like the old abandoned Soviet compounds. Yeah, they're from very... after the fall of the Soviet Union. When they just abandoned all of these like military complexes in the middle of nowhere and they were left to decay, the 86ers compound looks like this. And those were like if you were living in one of these Soviet compounds, you know, during during the time of the Cold War, you were not living well. Oh, yeah. You you were not living well. This was not a life of luxury. This was a very barren lifestyle. And that's really what they are. I think one of the saddest parts about seeing them leave at the end was so we see sometimes in their rooms and the common areas how they've personalized stuff and left their shit all over the place. And then at the end, when Vladelena's looking around, their rooms are bare. There's no books, there's no clothes, there's no personal knickknacks, they've torn down posters. Uh, Laughing Fox burns his drawings at the end, with the exception of one that he leaves for Vladelena. Is yeah. it is stark contrast to what you see when you see like their rooms when they're living in them. They're very different. And they didn't art like have much to begin with. Yeah, so, yeah. But they had enough to have personal things like that. So. Yep. I, we haven't really talked about the characters themselves. We've been yeah. talking a lot about well, Okay, so I'll, I'll get into probably my favorite, like, just moment in general in the story was the kind... I think it was up in episode 10 in the climactic battle between Shin and his dead brother being uh, in the fight as he was one of the legionnaires. When the shepherds, as they're yeah, called. Yeah, shepherds. Yeah. Um, and I really liked the kind of interplay that they did with... Um, 
showing um, Shin's brother's kind of, like, reaction to all of this, how even though he's still, like, going through, like, his headspace, he's still very angry being in the shepherd machine and all like that. Actually, is there, does the light novel expand a little bit more on, like, what being a shepherd does to, like, your mental state, or is it mainly... It's, yes, definitely. I could explain here if you want. We'll to get to it in Free Thoughts, free but thoughts. I'd imagine that it does something to your mental state. Kind of like, I'll make a, I'll make a, uh, a, a dark side and, uh, meh. Uh, dark wizard user comparison here. It kind of corrupts the way you view things potentially, uh, or is it a little different I don't than that? Slightly, slightly. Not. I don't know if corrupt is the right word, but it definitely changes you. Yeah. Because first of all, you're no longer of a physical body. Right. You are a yeah. brain inside of a robot. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And second of all. There's some sort of either brainwashing or implant involved here where the living brains are actively doing things that they wouldn't... That that their original original owners would not have done. Yeah. yeah there's these, a, these shepherds, there's the, like the 86ers that became these shepherds, would not have killed their own people voluntarily. Yeah. Some, some fucked up shit's happening here behind the scenes that is not expounded upon in the first season of the anime. To turn them into these twisted shepherds that are actively attacking the 86ers. Yeah. Because if, yeah. They, if they maintained all of their mental state, they would just go around the 86ers and attack the Republic. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't be hard for them. Yeah. 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 Or they just capture the 86ers and keep them safe, like, over yeah. in a different area. And the yeah. shepherds are actually the commander units, right? Yeah. They, yeah. they are the... Well, they are quite literally like a general, like a field general in yeah. terms of an army setting. So, yeah. yeah, but because um, the the dead brains can't form like complex plans uh, and thoughts. Uh, Not I in the don't... anime. In the anime, the dead brains cannot form complex thoughts and plans. Yeah. What they do is they can repeat their last dying mm. wish, basically. Again and again, or ask for help. Yeah, because I you, don't want to die. Because in another, in yeah. like another scene in like the episode where they were uh, Shane like runs off to like the zoo or whatever, they find like an incapacitated legion member, yeah. and the and that was just repeating one of its final thoughts essentially yeah. before it died. Actually, I think that one was a shepherd. Oh, was it? That, that one was, was a shepherd because it was a, a former eighty er uh, okay. and he and Shin could understand the eighty er but the eighty er couldn't understand them. Yeah. That was the problem. Yeah. yeah. Or it's more like I think it's more like mind reading in a way where like they can read their minds, but they can't really speak back to them in turn. Well, it's just Shin though. But yeah, yeah, it's just Shin. It's just Shin. Yeah. Kind of thing. You can hear what they're. I'll explain a little bit. That's more. That's something special, I think. Okay. I don't think so, it's yeah. a general kind of mind reading ability. Yeah. Okay, but I got I got a little bit off topic there, so yeah. I'll just continue with what I was thinking. I, I like that I, I like the climactic um, bit at the end there, and then just the final the the twisting of his brother's memory and intentions, yeah, and then the final realization of what he had done to his little brother, yeah, yeah. and then finally and then finally at the end, Shin wakes up and gives his brother the death that he wants to give him essentially the peace that he wants him to have. And yeah. then violent cathartic crying. Oh, yeah. I empathize yeah. with Shin so much. Cathartic crying is the greatest thing in the world. If you are upset, go fucking cry. You will feel better. Yeah. And it, and they and they just nail the, the music direction right there by using Avid and that and that and, in that scene. And the animation too cuz as as he's attacking Shin for the last time it flips back and forth between an image of his brother as a human and the thing yeah. that his brother has become. Yeah. And I mentioned it to Nick Knack uh, before we started talking, but when we see his brother before this in scenes as part of the robot, so they do this thing where his face is, it's just his head, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of got a bluish tone over it. And I'll put an image of it. I'll insert an image here, like a little animatic clip or something, because I don't think I can explain this, but it's, glitching like a computer program and it looks he looks insane obviously like something's yeah. wrong and it's very unnerving and disturbing and i really liked that part i thought it was great because it really gives you an insight to his mental state it's like he's on repeat on a certain idea unable to break away from it but still having some sense of higher function 
Yeah. Because essentially what's revealed, as a shepherd, his entire goal has been to save Shin this whole time, but saving Shin went from defeating the legions to him becoming a, le- a shepherd and then turning Shin also into a shepherd so they could be together forever in this way and he could protect him in this way. Yeah. Also, the scene where Shin's brother's hands go from, like, human hands strangling him to rotted Whoa. corpse hands strangling him. Yeah. Yeah. was pretty cool because we saw his brother's corpse earlier in the show, headless. Yep. Yeah. And that that is that is the only rotted corpse we see in the show. And it really it really shows that something horrific has happened, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then and then that final minute at the end there when Shin finally delivers the killing bro to his brother Shepherd mech essentially. Where he basically, he, he has the sudden realization, oh, you didn't need my protection at all. Instead of being violent and angry like he was as the shepherd, he then comes back essentially to his senses of who he originally was. For also, I do want to talk about it. Like, the battle right there was quite literally a David versus a Goliath battle, which is very nicely done. That was such an action. Hold up a sec. I didn't mean to, like, offend you about the politics thing, by the way, Brett. I just didn't, didn't want to talk about that as, like, a main thing, like, modern-day politics on the podcast episodes. I mean, it's rough because you have your background, your archaeology, your, your history thing. That yeah. is my thing right there. I, I know. Ethics and modern politics and politics in general. That's the kind of, that's where all, where I can get my big, giant, like, yeah. discussions on. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, there's a lot I hold back when I'm talking about shows. Like, I could have gone much farther into it for something like Fate Zero or even Madoka. Yeah. But I don't, because that's not, I say, the most important part of the show. Whereas with 86, I do feel that is one of the most important parts of the show. I yeah. No, I think it is, too. I would just... We just want to be tiptoeing. I'd actually like careful. it if you did it as a separate video after yeah. this. Maybe. I don't, I don't, I don't know, because yeah. I feel like that's... Politics are such a thing right now, especially online. I mean, it's messy, but that's yeah. kind of the point of politics, and that's one of the central things of the show is that there's no clean uh, aspect to all of this. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can know and be as vocal about it as you want, but there are some things you can't change, some things you can't control, things that you have to live with and figure out how you can best help while also acknowledging that's not necessarily going to change where you sit in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um... Well, Vladelina, basically. Vladelina yeah. and the Doctor kind of embody two different perspectives a lot of people take on modern politics, but that's... I hated the Doctor at mm. some, in some moments of the show. Oh, I hate her, but too. I do think that there's an aspect of her in a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you can look at that and you can see, even if you hate her, you can see aspects of yourself in both Vladelina and her, to be honest. Yeah. Like, watch any... I don't know, pull Illuminati, watch any one of her videos on some of the terrible things companies do or governments do, and you'll find you're like, oh, that's terrible. And yeah. you can, you're going to say that's terrible, and that's a modern thing that's happening in the world, but you're not actually able to do much about it And in that spot, and being real, you're not going to do much about it. Yeah, because I did want to specifically ask you, actually, for this, about the, the politics in, or surrounding, like, so, remember... Do we actually want to keep on recording yeah, this? Yeah, no, because okay. I'll leave most of this in. I'm only going to cut little bits of it. So, there's that one scene, right, where they're in the chapel in the Capitol, like, Vodlina and her uncle. Um, and her uncle makes a comment about what what a nation deserves if they're the people who actively stood by and executed a saint for their own good. Yeah, the saint. That's yeah, the founder the, in the statue. Yeah, 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 I know it's the founder, but I mean, like, that, and then the internment camps, and the 86ers and stuff like that, I mean, so politically, I don't really... Like, I, I see the politics right behind it. But her uncle keeps saying that it's it's the will of the people. Well, because that entire thing is supposed to be calling out a lot of um, modern Western society's yeah. fascination with Enlightenment ideals for centralizing their politics around. A lot of First World countries, and especially democracies, do that now. Um, America is one of the more obvious ones, because you have, like, your... Because it's so heavily patriotic compared to yeah. a lot of other countries. Yeah, because he says several times, like, very specifically, he says that the the military serves the will of the people, the people have spoken. Yeah. 
but if you look at any one of these countries' histories or any one of these countries' actions now, they do not live up to those ideals they espouse. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, it, it is a scathing critique of modern democracies. Modern democracies suck. Well, any of them. Democracy is the worst system, but it's the one we have, but it's the best one we've had so far. I was yeah. going to say, there are some quote to that effect. <laughs> there aren't necessarily better systems. It's not a good system, but there aren't better options. Yeah. Communism is not an answer for a better option, everybody. Capitalism isn't either. Okay. Mm. Fucking America is capitalist. Let's be honest yeah. here. Well, there's actually more capitalist countries than even America. I know. Oh, yes. It's definitely. so bad. Yeah. Singapore is apparently probably the closest you can get full capitalism. Uh, oh, yeah. From yeah. what I've heard from, like, some of my professors. I think... No, it's like one of the... There might be some Territories. Other no, it's one of the Chinese territories. I think Hong like, Kong pre... Uh... No, not Hong Kong. It's the one next to Hong Kong. It's the uh, Mil... Not Manila. Morocco, but... It was taken over by the British. It's one of the ones that is right next to Hong Kong. I can't remember the name. If anyone freaking knows it, put in the comments. Hong Kong is the city that was taken over to the British in that no, area. No, there's another one right there. That was also... Okay, the sun never sets on the British Empire. British. Yeah, British Brit- Britain doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. Britain doesn't count. Fucking British people. Goddamn. <laughs> yeah. no, but Offending like, a significant population uh, of English speakers. <laughs> yeah. Quite literally, if you are king in that, like territory of china you are quite literally king you got enough cash you're king anything will go your way so yeah even like freaking north korea usually goes over there to actually do its uh, stuff because it's willing to spend money there so technically they're king there so yeah i need you to speak up okay yeah <laughs> sorry uh, it's just <laughs> how i sound okay i know, I know. But your voice is also you're, fo- you're facing me, not the mic. Yeah. yeah. So while well, the mic might have picked you up just fine, you're facing me. Uh, and something I learned the other day, apparently, I was talking to my brother about sound quality and stuff like that and hearing. I come off louder because I speak in a higher register than you guys do. Mm. Bass automatically registers as lower. And because my voice is higher pitched than yours, I will always come across as louder. Mm-hmm. Because higher pitched noises sound louder than lower pitched noises in the human ear, even though there's no volume difference. That yeah. makes sense. Which is why I kind of look at my own sound waves and I'm like, oh my god, am I speaking so much louder than you guys? But that's not necessarily the case. It's just that I speak up like here! And that, like, shoots the mic up. Yeah. In pitch. It's like, we're going on exactly 40 minutes now. We still haven't oh, done Life Wars. No, we're going to cut us. There... Oh, I know a good yeah. chunk of yeah. that's getting cut. Yeah. yeah. But I, no, I actually want this to go a little longer. Because we haven't covered everything I want to cover. Yeah. Well, let's do the Waifu Wars then. Um, well, no, on. no, no, no. Waifu yeah. Wars last. Oh, we oh. have a standing tradition of Waifu Wars last now. Yeah. So... Back on the 86ers, right? One of the things we haven't talked on is internment camps. So part of this world that's yeah. integral is the fact that 86ers are relegated to internment camps and are raised to be soldiers. Yeah. They have no other purpose in life. They are raised to become processors, people who operate these mech suits. Yeah. Uh, which, okay, here's really quickly before we touch on it, I'm sure in Free Thoughts, the reason why I don't necessarily consider this a mech anime is because when I think of a mech anime, I think of Gundam and I think of mech suits, and these are not necessarily mech suits. They're human piloted mechanical attack vehicles, but they're not mech suits like a suit that you wear and then do karate in or something like that. Go, so Shinji. really, really quickly, that's why. But and moving you could away, technically from that. call them drones because that is what they're technically are. Go, Shinji, get in the robot. Called in the... I mean, there's no living things in there, so it isn't technically a fully autonomous. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, speaking of the 86ers, we have kind of there's the five ones who are left alive at the end. We've yep. got Sheen, the Undertaker. Yep. And then and we then actually we've got have Raiden, uh, Raiden, which is his Raiden. XO. Uh, Rico, who's Laughing Fox. Uh, who was Anna? Born. Yeah. Born. Yeah. Born. I pulled Sorry. up the list. I'm going to read them out. Okay. Go ahead. Like, okay. So then you have Raiden Shuga, who's werewolf. You have Theoto Rika, Laughing Fox, Anju Emma, the Snow Witch, and Karina Kukumila, or is it Kai? Kai. It's Kai, right? I think. Is the final one. So yeah. Kai Tania Kirschblut. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that Realm and I looked up the other day was we actually went through all of the 86ers and checked their call signs. Um, and their call signs actually follow a naming convention of being either stars in the night sky or mythical creatures or figures from Europe, very specifically. Yeah. And the... 
Black Dog and a Snow Witch are you talking about right there? No, no, all point? of them. Oh, no. Every I, single okay. one of them is a is actually a reference to something. And one of the things I liked about their suits is... So there's this thing that happens sometimes. It happened a lot with, like, trucks and vehicles in World War One and Two. Is that the people who man them will draw designs on them and name them, like, the dancing girl and draw a little dancing girl. And they do that with their call signs on each of their vehicles. It's like the Red Baron. Yeah painting his plane red so you always know who he is so each of these people have little things drawn on but sheen's is his older brothers and it has a dulahan painted on it uh because his brother's call sign was dulahan which is very apropos given the fact that he is missing a head yeah dulahan but with a shovel not a sword a shovel eh, it doesn't really matter dulahan's a dulahan yeah. some of them are a little weird but I mean, essentially, they all have meanings behind them. Yeah. Some of them are named after flowers, some are stars, some are figures, some are mythical animals. Yeah. Although, I will go back to what I was talking about, the Snow Witch and the Black Dog. You actually do see the dynamic of them, like, right there. Because in uh, German mythology, if you actually read the uh, wiki... The Black Dog isn't a reference to a German I don't remember. Thing. But and th they're tied together in some mythological thing. They're actually not. The dog and the witch. No. Really? The check it. No, the black dog is a... I did check. The black dog oh. is a reference to a Celtic folk figure. Oh. Okay. Uh, a, another harbinger of death. So it's also referenced, actually, funnily enough, in Black Butler. Um, the black dog appears um, when a dog is sacrificed in sights of, like, great horror or something uh. like that. I don't know. But And then the snow witch is the snow queen. Yeah. That's just the, the Hans Christian Andersen snow queen story. Yeah. I do actually like the dynamic of those two. Yeah, they're so, so cute. Yeah. Uh, and depressing. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> hey, at least it's not like uh, gumming like kill. It's fucking hell. They they so. have like a romance thing going between Black Dog and Snow Witch, but Black Dog dies and then Snow Witch mm. is kind of left. Yeah. And it's really tragic and so cute, but tragic. See, we get a lot of characterization for the 86ers because a lot of the time, if we see them in the show and they aren't actively fighting, they're living their lives. Like, they are they are quite literally making the best out of the situation they're in. Laughing, joking, playing games, drawing pictures, having cookouts. They adopt a kitten who they call Kitty or Two-Tone or Black and White or Paws or... There's no actual name for her. Yeah. And then they have Fido, they're... Mech dog. They're, they're Mech dog. Well, yes. it's, it's more a of a scavenger. storage unit. Yeah. That's what they're actually called. They're yeah. scavengers. And he... Oh, his video clips. Oh. That was like one of the most... That hurt. Like, yeah. just flashing through all of his clips and then you get to the end and he's just dead. And and they were clips of memories that were just part of these characters' lives. Like, everyday memories. Like, Kaye coming in. Oh my god, he touched me on the back today. <gasps> And you just see, yeah. and you just see earlier Shin just lifted her, lifted her up mm -hmm. by basically her. Oh, her the shirt. mechanic. We don't it's talk too adorable. much about mechanic or see him so much, but I like his character so much. Yeah, the the mechanic for me was one of one of the worst parts of that episode. Like emotionally, was the re the revelation of the mechanic. He takes off his glasses and she goes, "Are you half?" Is that no? I'm full. Well, yeah. I just dyed my hair because my wife and child who were 86, were taken. Yeah. And the I followed make them. make it a huge point that the, the only, uh, what they're called Albas, I believe, yeah. Yeah. that they really, truly respect as equals are the ones that, like, give up their actual, like, privileges of living in that capital city mm -hmm. and live the same lives as them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there are actually a few that followed along. Otherwise, Otherwise they... Uh, however useful the Albas in the capital can be, they are not, they don't have the same experience as them. Otherwise, yeah. they uh, otherwise they refer to them as the white pigs. It's actually kind of funny. They draw a picture of Lena at yeah. the very beginning, and they draw a picture of, I mean, Miss Piggy essentially in like a Renaissance style yep. dress. It's really weird, um, but that's how they see her. And they don't yeah. stop calling her that through the entire series. They they call her that like right up to when they're like out camping, basically. Yeah. yeah. When, they, when they're off the radar. Well, in, in a lot of ways, I think that's because. I mean, they have been burned so many times by handlers mm -hmm. and things yeah. like that. And, I mean, why trust if you know that nothing's going to change? I think they yeah. trust her. They just, at this point in the series, 
don't have the same respect for her as she has for them. Well, they didn't trust her at the very beginning. At the very beginning. They grow to trust her. They just, yeah. I think they've, in, in their heads, they know that she can't actually do anything, which yeah. is why they're so surprised when she manages to get the strike set down. I mean, granted, she broke a lot of laws there and rules yeah. and is therefore on house arrest, but they were so surprised when she managed that because they never thought that someone could do something even if they wanted to. All talk, no bite. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I actually do want to say, uh, Anju Emma, the Snow Witch, is actually a uh, owl butt. She's half. No, she's not. She's in, both in the, her parents. No, no, in, in the anime, they say she's half. We do not get if she's whole in the anime. There's very specifically a point where they say she is half. I don't remember that particularly, so I'm not going to comment. Okay, I, I was... specifically remember a point where they're talking yeah. about where they're, who they're, what type of people they are, and she says that she's half. Huh. So yeah. if it says something different in the light novel, do not spoil that for me. But they did, they did bring up that there are some full albas that go out there, like yeah. Laughing yeah. Fox's predecessor yeah. was a uh, full alba. Yeah. But in the anime, they say that she's half. Well, here's the thing, though. Like, uh, I don't remember that scene all. I really don't. I don't remember them saying either way, so yeah. I'm not... I, I, well, I, I, don't I don't remember think it's... them specifically saying she's half. I do. Yeah. But uh, I don't think this is going to interfere with the anime at all. She is descended from 86ers. Well, yeah. yeah. Like, a very, very distant relative. But she is. That's why her hair isn't pure white. Well, no, it's more the eyes. It's not actually yeah. the hair. Mm. Look. She, she's not full though. Yeah. Like, let's be very specific. I mean, think think back to like American racial rules. Unless you were a hundred percent white, you weren't white. Yeah. This is the rules we're going by. Unless you're a hundred percent Alba, you're not Alba. Yeah. Any tainting of the bloodline, because if you if your bloodline is tainted, you can pass it on in an even greater capacity depending on how the genes come out. Yeah. So she is half. I mean, they they say that she's part. Yeah. I don't know if they say half, but they do say that she's part yes, Alba. Yes, that was what I was going yeah. to try to fight you on. But yeah, Better she's not. That, yeah. She's not full. Yeah. Uh, and in the anime, they don't show her with silver hair. Her hair is like purplish, like on the purplish spectrum in the anime. Yeah. Because if we pull it up, I mean, it, that is not the same color silver that all the other albas have. Yeah. That is purple. I mean, it looked like the same color. <sighs> you're colorblind. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. You're colorblind. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, we get to see out like oh everyone's just fucking human like freaking like the 86 there's some crap people there's some nice people alba same thing yeah. yeah i don't know and i i like how accurate some of their names are like for example i talked about this with the boys but um kaye her name is kirschblut and they talk in the anime very specifically about how she was discriminated against for the color of her skin and hair, even in her own community, because she's redheaded and she's a little darker skin toned. Yeah. And Kirsch, so Kirsch is a German cherry cordial liquor, and Blut means blood. So it's actually calling her like cherry blood, or something along those she's lines. She's a mud blood. Ah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. They discriminate against those because more no, it's that would like be the of other. Sorry, no, she's a. She's she's a ginger and gingers have no soul. <laughs> <laughs> right in line. <laughs> oh, oh we have made that joke too many times. Okay. Have we made it on the podcast? I think we've made it every time there's a ginger character in the movie. I don't cast. think we've had a major ginger character yeah, in a movie. You're not the one who edits these episodes. Oh well, I've never made that joke before. I don't think. Yeah, but um, so that covers the eighty. Kind of covers the eighty six. There's so many of them that we can't talk about each of them individually. Yeah. Because there are at least 30 of them in yes. total mentioned in the show or explicitly uh, shown. We get 20 at the start because so many of them died before. I was going to say because yeah. there are at least, when I was counting on the line of the names I recognize, at least 23 of them are part of the current squad. A bunch of characters who are like have speaking roles in their opening scene and then they just disappear from the series. And then they appear yeah. in the... In the flashback, so like, yeah. yeah, they they kill off these characters pretty I, liberally. I think we start in in the first episode. There's already three dead in the uh, yeah. three in that scene four. at the beginning. Three yeah. or four. Like they were leaving the compound towards the end of the series. I'm like, wait, there's only that many left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a scene at the very end where the five of them that are left are sitting in the dining hall eating, and then it changes 
to the image of them from earlier in the series where all 26 of them are sitting in the dining hall eating and then switches back. Yeah. And it's such a stark contrast because in when they're all there, they're all spread out across the tables and laughing and having fun. And then it switches to like a kind of a darkened room with just five at a single table kind of in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. So sad. Th- there is so much to so do much with the... So much symbolism, so much background. Yeah, there's yeah. so much to do with the symbolism in this show and the characters and how they relate to the themes and storylines and each develop to be individual, personalized people that we literally cannot cover it in a decent length episode on this podcast. Yeah. Waifu Wars now? Yes, we can oh. go to Waifu Wars. Waifu Wars! Waifu Wars! Waifu Wars! Realm, go! Fido! Fido is best girl. Oh my fucking god. Knickknack. Uh, I'm gonna go Luna. Okay. I'm gonna go with uh, Snow Witch because I just feel so sorry for her. Uh, my favorite is Raiden, werewolf. Ah. Who Realm affectionately calls a Diarmid dupe. The Diarmid looking <laughs> motherfucker? <Yeah. laughs> I didn't even realize actually because I don't remember Diarmid very well from Fate Zero. But he does kind of look like Diarmid. <laughs> But he has a great personality. I like him. He has a, a similar thing going to Zoro uh, in later One Piece where he's got all the kind of joking around and the camaraderie with the other characters. But when necessary, he can be very serious and acts truly as a second in command like he should. Well, yeah, because Shin goes wild and then like someone has to pick up the Well, pace. yeah, but not even there. It's mo- in multiple places he actively steps up as second in command. Yeah. All right, well, I think we've... We sort of done this as much as we can. This has been an excessively long story section. Okay, so. to be fair, we could have kept going. No, I know we can keep yeah. going. But we need to we cut could. it at some point. <laughs> yeah. We got free thoughts so, still. See you next time, guys. Try harder. Like, yeah. comment. Like, comment, subscribe.